I'm back. It's time. It's time to kick ass and shoot bubble gum. And I don't have any gum. Damn it. Eh, kidding. Sorry. Um, little corny '80s action humor. Anyway, um, okay. So just got finished talking about Batman. So now to talk about Expendables three. Okay. I like the Expendables movies, most mostly because of the fact that they are, well, yes, they're tributes or homages to 80s and 90s action movies, and they do awesome at it. The first one was a little hammy, a little forceful, hokey, but it was still enjoyable. The second one I liked even more because it had more humor, it had more characters, and a lot more action. Uh, Expendables 3 was kind of like Expendables 2, only a little bit toned down. I was a little confused with the PG-13 rating, because there have been PG-13 outings for R-rated franchise, and they rarely ever do well. Like, say, RoboCop 3. That was bad. Live Free or Die Hard. Or Die Hard 4, really. That was actually good because it made use of the special effects and other kinds of stuff that made it good. It was overall a good movie. Expendables 3, well, it didn't seem that much different compared to Expendables 1 and 2. I mean, it was kind of like a little bit of Expendables 1, but mixed in with more of the action and humor of Expendables 2. And it was such... It was a... I liked it. I liked, I liked how it ultimately panned out, because... I got a lot of laughs, and, well, see, um, you know the diff, you know something, there's, you know the difference between Sylvester Stallone and Michael Bay in regards to their recent movies? Some of Michael Bay's movies, like the Transformers, at least the sequels, they try to act as though they're deep, or they're trying to make some kind of message. But really, they're not. They're just explosions and padding and laziness and stupidity. And sometimes they're enjoyable. You may get a laugh or two, but that's few and far between, especially with the recent movie nowadays. But Expendables 3, Sylvester Stallone and everyone else involved with in those movies, they they know that, they at least know, they, they said that they're making them homages to 80s and 90s action movies. And sometimes there's some smart, and sometimes there's some stupidity. But... They're overall just fun movies. And really, with the Expendables, you know that they're having a blast. You know that there's silliness and maybe some over-the-top campiness or stupidity, but it's fun. It's fun, and that's what expen the Expendable movies are like. They're fun, they're enjoyable, they're laughable. They're, they're just all around awesome. And you got all that male testosterone in there, and it's just, <laughs> it's, it's, and Expendables 3 is no different. Expendables 3 is no different than what the previous two have done. It's got more humor, it's got more characters, it's got everything. It's, I don't know why there's been, it's not doing as well as some people have hoped. Maybe it's the PG-13 rating. I did hear about this online piracy thing. I don't know too much about it, but can assume, I can guess that might have contributed to the movie's not so well performance, I guess, but it's still enjoyable. And there you got more you got more people in this, like um, Harrison Ford. I mean you, you get the thing about all the Expendables movies is that you get to see all these iconic action stars. You wonder why haven't they ever started in the movie together? And that's what you got Expendables for. You got you got actors like Chuck Norris and Bruce Willis and Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, Jean-Claude Van Damme, uh, Mel Gibson. Oh, man. They're all together in all these movies, and it's just such a delight. It's You're seeing the iconic action stars of your childhood or your teenage years, and you're just seeing them all together. It's just... It's just... Really, it's just... It's honoring, it's honoring your childhood and teenage memories. That's basically what it is. It's just, Stallone and all the others, they know 
what they're doing. They're not trying to be pretentious or anything. They know that the movies that they're doing are a little over the top action y, but they're just having such fun with it. They're having fun. That's ultimately what it is. It's having fun. And really, isn't what part of going to the movies is about? It's having fun watching this. I mean, with Transformers 4, it didn't really seem fun to me. Okay. Also, considering the fact that I was the only one in the theater, and sometimes that can be a delight when you're the only one in the theater, but still, um, Transformers 4 was just a bore. I, I was bored with it. Expendables 3, I was awake and it was awesome. It, it was, and it was a little bit of a shame not seeing Bruce Willis in this one. They kind of say that his character, Mr. Church, is out of the picture and like, okay. And I did hear some things like Bruce Willis wanted more money for this movie, but couldn't get it, but whatever. Um, my favorite part in this movie is when they go and rescue Wesley Snipes' character, and I think his character's name is Dr. Death, and um, they ask him what he was in prison for, and he says, Tax evasion. <laughs> I laugh so hard at that, because, well, you know, the real life tax evasion stuff that Wesley Snipes actually did, but it was still so funny. I like that. I like that right there. It was just so funny, and I like how these Expendables movies do more of the tongue-in-cheek humor with the action, like the action movies of the 80s and 90s. They do it, and it works so well, you know? So, I don't see why this movie's so hated. I mean, yeah, it's mindless violence, but it's, but at least it's fun. And seeing Mel Gibson in here, it was, oh man, you know, I liked seeing him in Machete Kills because, I mean, yeah, some people say that Mel Gibson's got crazy, but you know what? With Machete Kills, with this B-movie action, he, he gets to embrace the craziness, and he does well with it. And with Expendables 3, it's the same thing here, and seeing Mel Gibson and Sylvester Stallone fight each other, it's, it's actually pretty cool. I mean... Okay, in the Expendables movies, you always get the big fights with Sylvester Stallone and someone else. In the first movie, it was Sylvester Stallone versus Steve Austin, and Stallone kind of lost that fight. Heck, there was even a real-life neck injury, but in Expendables 2, it was Stallone versus Jean-Claude Van Damme, and I thought, holy crap, that was awesome. Uh, Expendables 3, it was a little quick, but it was still enjoyable. And... Again, it's and there. Okay, there's some new actors, um, um, some new action stars like Kellen Lutz, uh, Ronda Rousey, Kelsey Grammer. Um, they do great. I mean, they're shown. I mean, char like Kelsey Grammer's character. Can't remember his name sadly. I think it's Bonaparte. I think his last name is pronounced Bonaparte. Bonaparte. I don't know. And Robert Davi. Um, they're shown in briefly, but. You know that they're iconic actors, and it's fitting, seeing as how they might have st they started movies like this before. So um, they're sort. Of, I mean, it again. It's just it's just really enjoyable. It's just enjoyable seeing all of them here, and I kind of like how they try to make um, you know the young versus old type of humor. You know, like. The young say, oh, you're old, you're not going to do much. And the older are like, oh, you're young, you don't know anything. It's not really, it's a little forced, but I like it. I like it because it's trying to be funny with it, and it actually works. It actually works here. So, um, oh, it was, it was great. And, yeah, I mean, it, it kind of, the movie, it, Expendables 3 kind of takes a little something from Expendables 2 that one of their own gets seriously injured and or killed, in this case being Terry Crews. I mean, with Expendables 2, it was a little forced because Liam Hemsworth's character, Billy the Kid, he he's just there. He's, he's only been a part of the Expendables for a little while. And when his character dies, it's supposed to be a big deal because I can, under, I can sort of understand that because Billy the Kid was like, yeah, Barney Ross's protege, but he, uh, it would have made a bit more sense if it had been a character from the previous movie, like, say, Mickey Rourke's character, Tool, but 
that didn't work, that didn't happen, so we got this new character. But with Expendables 3, it makes more sense for why the Expendables break down, because wasn't Terry Crews sort of like the comic relief of the Expendables? His character, Hail Caesar, his character was sort of like the comic relief? I don't know. I mean, all the characters do really good jokes, and it's hard to tell who's supposed to be the comic relief of the team. But I guess uh, that problem solved with Antonio Banderas' character, and I don't know, some people might have gotten annoyed with Antonio Banderas' character, uh, but I thought he was awesome. He was funny, and he was so energetic, he was so hyper, he was like all over the place. It's just, wow. And again, it's just the fact that there, you've seen all these iconic action stars just interacting with each other, just playing off each other, like Jason Statham and Wesley Snipes, they get into this rival, they have this rivalry with each other of who's the better knife expert, and then then there's that knife throwing contest they do near the end of the movie, and you see it in the trailer, and um, they both throw their knives, they both hit the bullseye, but then Wesley Snipes, but see, what the trailers didn't show you was what happened afterwards. Wesley Snipes' knife falls off, and Jason Statham stays on, but it's still so funny and so great to see them all together and um, I, I keep hearing that they're gonna do an Expendables 4 and 5 and they're gonna get more iconic 80s action stars like Hulk Hogan and Pierce Brosnan I hope that happens I hope that happens and hopefully I'll get to see more iconic 80s action stars like Michael Bean or Kurt Russell maybe Michael Rooker oh man it would be so awesome to see Michael Rooker in an Expendables movie. He'd be perfect, either as a villain or as an Expendables himself. And I'd even like to see an Expendables prequel. Because, see, with this movie, it's sort of like trying to focus on what the Expendables are really supposed to be all about. Like, see, according to this movie, the, the Expendables were founded by Sylvester Stallone's character, Wesley Snipes' character, and Mel Gibson's character, like they were original Expendables, and that the Expendables we've been seeing for the past couple of movies, like Dolph Lundgren, Mickey Kutcher, uh, Jason Statham, Jet Li, they may or may not have been Expendables from the very beginning, but they were actually recruits. So, oh, and yeah, Hail Caesar, Terry Crews' character. So, I mean, I would have liked to have seen, I mean, really, Mel, Mel Gibson even made a valid, Mel Gibson's character. He even made a, a solid point, like, do they even know what they're really doing? Who they're really working for? You know? And I'm kind of expecting some kind of mercenary team versus big government type of thing, you know? Trying to do an anarchist, trying to, you know, the kind of uh, rebel against the government that you might see in other movies, but maybe Expendables won't get to that, I, I don't know. I kind of hope it happens. That seems the logical conclusion of where it might come to. It'd be good to see Bruce Willis's character again. Maybe he'll be the villain in the next one. I don't know. But it seemed like a valid point what Mel Gibson's character was making. So will this be expanded upon in another movie? Hopefully. I hope so. But until then, we got Expendables 3, and it's a really good movie. I mean, my personal favorite is Expendables 2, but Expendables 3 is close. It's close to beating Expendables 2, but I still like Expendables 2 more. But uh, until then, we got this movie. So, see you later.